Ode to Three Dead Willows. The British way of naming their homes so charmed us, we planted a few saplings that first year and wrote letters with lines like, Spring has come at last to three willows. Not that we lived in England. Our scrub acre was within interstate rumbling distance, a thrum we helped to muffle with willows, long symbolic of druids, pagans, back when white people were indigenous, which is just a way of saying before sin. When the first tree died, it wasn't that bad. Two Willows was a bit so-so as a name, yet still it sounded like a place in the Lake District, perhaps near Wordsworth's Dove Cottage, or not that far from Hilltop, where Beatrice Potter communed with woodland creatures. But when the second tree died, we had a problem. Welcome to One Willow? No, that couldn't be said. It wouldn't do. Dead trees. We grieve for them, and we grieve for ancestors stuck with sex guilt by the early church, forced from earthy Isis to chaste Mary. We blamed it on the barcodes fixed to the willow's trunks in the big box lot, the curse of commerce. Or was it us, divorced from the simple sense to not plant willows on a slope in a drought? But. You know, tribal whitey never landscaped. Their world simply was fecund beyond belief. Their lives were filled with fire, stars, sucking marrow from crushed bones, then washing it all down with the rankest mead before the dankest ruttings in the darkest corners, brutish thrusts sliding them off skins, backs abraded the breath from their abscessed teeth in the other's face. All included in the pagan bargain, of course, but this is the part we're not so sure about. This is the part that scares us. My name is Rupert Fike. These are the pear tree and pear tree that replaced two of the willows.